Hello everyone, this is Anjur Nadav and I am going to elaborate on the topic strain improvement of industrially important microorganisms. So what is meant by strain improvement? Strain improvement is a process in which we are going to alter the microorganisms genetic makeup so that it gives higher yield of the desired product. So for it, it is very necessary for us to change its genetic makeup. Only by changing its pH, media formulation, temperature, aeration, agitation, such parameters, it is not going to change into the, it is not going to give higher yields. So for, so for that, there are certain processes. So how is this strain improvement done? And what is the purpose behind it? What is the purpose? Strain improvement, it gives higher yields of the desired product. And it makes the process more economical. So, there are some techniques by which we can improve a certain stream, which are So, the wild type which we 
be changed into the mutant type and then a strain is selected which will give enhanced product which is this one for this selection is very tedious this process is very tedious but some microorganisms survive lethal dose of such uh, mutagenic agents and some microorganisms cannot survive lethal doses of such mutagenic agents those which survive lethal doses of mutagenic agents they mutate they transform into a mutant microorganisms whereas organisms which do not survive these high levels of uh, lethal doses they die in that case so it is a very complicated job but again for the selection of the mutant which is giving us higher yields of uh, the product is again a tedious technique this these mutations can lead into first major mutation where in major mutation proform changes takes place in the microorganism that is changes in the morphological and biochemical properties takes place this is called as major mutation a major mutation in which profound changes that is everything changes in the microorganisms morphological and biochemical properties and the second one is minor mutation there is only slight change in the there is only slight change in the biochemical characteristic of that microorganism this is called as major mutation and minor mutation so for example if we take organism a fungus streptomyces species species which is wild and expose it and it produces anti mycin a which is an antibiotic if we expose the same fungus to a certain mutagenic agent and this streptomyces species will show absence of pigment alteration in dense coloration which is an example of major mutation and it will give yield of the same antibiotic 0.75 to 9.75 grams 
per liter of the substrate. So how are the improved strains selected? For the selection of uh, oxotropic mutant, it is comparatively easier than selection of non-oxotropic mutant. So for the selection of oxotropic mutant, there is a technique called as penicillin technique, which we are going to see. Penicillin technique.
Penicillin. This is minimal drug. Now, allow it for incubation and after incubation, what we can do is, white cells will be killed and for the selection of the oxytrophic mutant, we can use replica plate technique. One gene 
and second D, which will lead to the formation of third D. Which might give other new characteristics. For this, we can use techniques like processes like for genetic recombination, we can use processes like transformation, transduction, and conjugation. Firstly, we, we are going to see genetic recombination by conjugation. In conjugation, when two bacteria containing we suppose this is a donor cell and this is a recipient cell. If a bacteria consists of a plasmid that has an uh, extra uh, gene which is going which is, which gives it an ability to produce a certain antibody then with the help of ciliated appendages like pili both these bacteria come in close contact with each other and the chromosome is transferred in the recipient cell this is R cell, this is D. D stands for donor, R stands for recipient. Now, what happens is, bacteria has its own chromosome and with the chromosome, uh, the transferred DNA, the transferred cr chromosome, some part of it might be cleaved by the enzymes and some part of it might form a crossover with the chromosome that is in the present in the bacteria which will be introduced in the bacterial chromosome this cell is called as recombinant cell or recombinant DNA. Second is genetic recombination by transformation. Similar type of mechanism takes place, but here shredded DNA or pieces of DNA are introduced into the cell by increasing the porosity of the bacterial cell and then this naked DNA forms a crossover with, with the existing bacteria, bacterial chromosome and it is introduced into the chromosome now this chromosome will replicate and the additional characteristic if it is uh, an antibiotic producing gene then this chromosome will be responsible for that extra additional characteristic to that cell. Third is genetic recombination by transduction. transduction but for transduction there is involvement of bacteriophages. Bacteriophages are those organisms which infect a bacterial cell. Bacteriophages, third, is by transduction. In transduction, virus, what happens is, a bacteria example a virus a bacteriophage which has uh, this blue DNA what happens is if it is going to attach onto the 
surface of the bacterial cell and for the for its replication it is going to insert its genetic material inside the host cell now what happens is this uh, dna or rna it gets dna uh, it in introduces or incorporates itself into the bacterial chromosome and now it replicates by replicating now this bacteria has bacteriophages uh, dna and now it is going to replicate when it replicates it is going to form all the proteins that are present in the viral capsule so it is going to produce virus particles into the host cell and pack its own genetic material along with it now if the if the cell if the site uh, if the bacteriophage undergoes lytic cycle this cell will burst and all these viral particles all these viral particles will release into the environment now these viral particles with some part of the host gene now this will go and attach onto different cells which are present in close proximity of the uh, of the the same bacteria and now this cell is going to attach onto the a new cell and it is going to transfer its genetic material which consists of both into the bacterial cell now this is going to incorporate itself into the bacterial cell and this will replicate forming a cross over and then finally forming a recombinant dna so these are three processes of uh, genetic re recombination which is transformation transduction and conjugation and the last one uh, that the technique that is used for uh, strain improvement is strain improvement by genetic engineering here what we do is we we use different tools required for the transfer or introduction of gene into the host for that what uh, for example insulin produce, producing gene which is present in a human cell this is example this is dna and this is a human cell okay now there is another cell bacterial cell which consists of its own chromosome so this is e coli it has plasma dna as well as chromosome its own chromosome so with the help of certain restriction enzymes which help in the cleaving of the cutting of the, uh, this plasma dna what we can do is form a nick in the plasma dna and from a human cell the dna from that dna what we can do is gene 
responsible for producing insulin is cut and used. Now, both of these are after cutting it with the restriction enzymes and with the help of ligases we can form a DNA molecule uh, of gen uh, plasmid DNA which has insulin producing ability. Human insulin producing ability. Now what we can do is transfer it into a vector which will help in the cloning of the same plasmid DNA. Cloning it uh, as if it is going to uh, if the vector, uh, if the plasmid DNA is self-replicating, it will self-replicate into many copies and then it will transfer into, it is transferred into another bacteria and this bacteria, this bacteria, suppose the same bacteria, E. coli, what we are going to do is, we are after reintroduction, we are going to grow it into a medium which will help in the production of these cells. Now, this growth might contain insulin is what we can interpret. And there are certain techniques for downstreaming which will help in the purification of insulin and finally the, uh, the product is packaged and manufactured, packaged and then sold in the form of dried powder. Disadvantages uh, are the foreign DNA may be unstable and it might, uh, it might get eliminated by the restriction enzymes present in the bacterial cell and there are no cloning vectors specifically available for industrially uh, required, industrially important microorganisms. So the, these are the two disadvantages of genetic engineering but this is the technique by which we can, this is genetic engineering and uh, so we have, we have covered uh, strain improvement by uh, Strain improvement by mutation, uh, genetic recombination and by genetic engineering.